to you all so yeah uh, the little intro about me he is my mohammed sayed so i basically work as a data scientist in blenheim salcott it services and majorly i'm focusing on to the product development on the blenheim salcott currently working on the product development side i have built one product before joining this organization previously i worked in the tech fanatic as a data sci- lead data scientist where i have built one uh, is a saas based product which has been lead to the several rounds of funding and then i left and i joined a new organization so yeah that's all about me looking forward for this session and hoping for a good thank you thank you so much askari and, and congratulations to you for the opportunity that you have received thank um, you so much before we uh, move ahead it would be really great uh, mr abhijit if you could tell a little bit about yourself and about the organization and uh, to all our prospective learners got it So thanks Amrita and thanks Askari and Akash for joining with us here today. So guys, my name is Abhijit Padil and I head the uh, you know uh, the Freshers Vertical for Upgrad here. We call it Upgrad Campus, and uh, I look after the sales and marketing and operations for this particular vertical. Uh, in fact, you know, like I am here with a spe- very special intention here. You know, like I have. i have been the part of this vertical since its inception last you know a couple of years back when we started uh, when we started our first student who enrolled uh, the first course when we started and today you know when we look back we have almost like uh, more than 10000 students work, uh, studying with us so i really wanted to know uh, what kind of questions do you guys have what kind of doubts do you guys have what kind of expectations do you do you guys have because whenever i interact with my counseling team uh, they tell me that you know every student uh, you know who wants to enroll with us wants to talk to one of our alumni uh, so that they can know it better they can directly uh, hear it from the horse's mouth they can understand uh, how we deliver the course what are the good things about the course and at the same time what are the cons what are the bad things about the course as well and that's why we have organized this you know when uh, you know we invite couple of our alums and uh, so that you can directly ask your questions to them on same platform and your questions and their answers can re- like you know can help probably the other people who are here on the platform and i'm really happy that so many people are here uh, so guys uh, feel free to ask questions to akash and askari and at the same time i'm here so i would also love to take up some questions if you have questions about uh, how we do why we do and what we do uh, i'd be more than happy to answer so over to you amrita thank you so much abhijit for the highlight here and uh, definitely yes uh, the floor is open for questions uh, but before we do go ahead uh, the host has some questions uh, myself you know and i just wanted to ask to uh, akash and asari uh, why why did you choose this program uh, like specifically let's let's uh, uh, you know start with mr sayed uh, why did you choose artificial and, uh, intelligence and machine learning i mean did you have any doubts before you took this course uh like you know how did you push yourself to actually take this program oh uh, well thanks uh, thanks amrita so the major focus of taking this course was when i was just in a contact with one of your uh, top program mentor so the most of the things which i like is the most hands on experience what i am getting so i'm not much into the data analytics part so the fascinating thing so wherever i am finding the course was more about the analytics and all but i'm more fascinating towards machine learning and ai as it is the future of the upcoming generation so that's what helped me to attract and got my better hands on experience on the ai and further enhance my knowledge so that's why i choose this uh mr akash can you please let like, put in a highlight yeah. on this question yeah yeah so basically i was doing uh, some uh, i knew some kind of web development before uh, but uh, i need to improve my skill so i was searching through uh, different kind of <clears throat> platforms where i can find a perfect uh, course which can uh, make me job ready plus uh, help me uh, get uh, to the point where i am today so and uh, on one fine day i receive a call from upgrad and uh, they put me through all the processes and yeah it was basically like uh, getting a really good mentorship from uh, the team that's the reason i chose upgrade that's really great to hear that actually and in fact like you know uh, we we have a question from the audience also and i suppose like you know mr abhijit would help us answer that uh, like uh, mr sajan kumar wants to know uh, you know is like uh, Uh, like can can he do the program if he is from a non tech background uh, mr abhijit would you like to help the student 
Definitely. Uh, so, Sajan, if I may ask, and you can answer here in the chat box itself, what course do you think you are looking out for? Or what kind of job profile are you looking out for? Uh, are you looking out for a tech job? Are you looking for a non-tech job? Because we have both the options available. So once you answer that, I'll probably, uh, you know, uh, and this is the Devish's question, I think. Uh, is there anyone with non-tech background? That's a different question, I guess. So Sajan, you are an MCOM uh, specialization uh, do, uh, in finance. You are doing yeah. MCOM. And you want to know what are the programs and if there are any program collaboration, collaborating with co company that provides job assured. So Sajan, I'm very, very happy to, you know, inform you that we do have uh, job guarantee program available but now that your answer is non-technical you are looking for non-technical but no sales job that you are looking for Sajan, do you call yourself creative because if you call yourself creative then you probably can go into digital marketing you know i have been hiring for digital marketing for last one one and a half year now and uh, i can tell you like my personal preference goes to freshers my personal preference goes to people who come with no experience because you know they don't they come with fresh ideas they don't come up with you know, bookish, you know, uh, ideas which have been, you know, by hearted sort of things. Uh, so, you know, I and, and I have a lot of friends who are, you know, hiring for digital marketing. We have a lot of employers uh, who hire from us from our digital marketing batch. Uh, most of them uh, prefer freshers because, you know, they want to have somebody who comes up with like out of the box ideas, which are not well, very well, you know, uh, cliched sort of used ideas. So, shouldn't be a problem so digital marketing could be one option for you when when you want a non technical sort of job or non technical sort of career the other option that uh, i would really like to suggest because you are mcom and studying finance a uh, business analyst uh, business analytics certification course in business analytics is something that you should definitely you know look out for um, because this needs a little bit of you know understanding of math but that's about it uh, any non technical person can go for uh, becoming business analyst and business analyst you know i don't think i have to explain the future for a business analyst role uh, tremendous growth is there tremendous uh, opportunities are there you can go on nokri.com you can go on glassdoor and you can see the average salaries also in our case this average salary for business analyst profile goes somewhere around like 5.5 to 6 lakh rupees average i'm saying you know highest that i think our student has gotten in business analyst uh, profile is somewhere around 12 to 12.5 lakhs i guess fresher okay so uh, Sajan, to answer your question in short, uh, digital marketing and business anal uh, analytics are two options that we have are definitely useful for you. So the counselor who is who has been in touch with you, you can ask him, uh, you can explain your in entire background to him and the counselor will help you to choose between business analytics or digital marketing. All right. There's actually like very a very good question asked by uh, Christy. Uh, uh -huh. She's a student of, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. This is just got scrolled. She actually wanted to uh, let you know that uh, the tough part for her is coding as she is from a non-CS uh, background. And can she overcome that in six months? Six months to overcome coding? Uh, she doesn't come from coding background? Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, Christy, my, you know, like very honest and very pure answer here for you is like, I think coding can be learned in a month's time. Not more than that you know, to get a little bit of hands-on experience on coding. I think a month is more than enough. If you want to be like, like solid master of coding, probably you'll have to spend more, but six months is more than enough time for that. One month is good enough uh, to call yourself somebody who has a knowledge of coding. So, you know, I, I am a mechanical engineer. Uh, I have studied coding to a very limited uh, amount. And I can tell you that when I started studying for the first coding language, even after like studying mechanical engineering, I didn't take more than a month uh to to you know like actually know everything that was about it uh to know uh for, about the prog uh, programming language all right so it was c of course now there are very advanced languages like python python is so easy like 10 times easier than uh c language is what i can tell you right now so coding is not a matter of more than a month is what i can tell you definitely uh ap apologies to hijack abhijit Sure, sure. Go on. So I just want to add the point. So, like, basically, as a fresher, when I was coming towards this background, and uh, I belong to the CS background, but if someone tell me that I am from non-technical background, so trust me, my friend was from the mechanical background, having a none of the zero knowledge in the coding, but still he's a data scientist with a good package. So there is nothing called a, a fresher or you having experience in coding or not. A coding in the industry is twenty percent. Is 80% is what you analyze, how you understand what business problem is. 
and you need a pen paper rather than that having a uh, reading any you read any article you won't get anything but if you have a pen paper a proper logical you can develop anything so there is nothing called uh, you need to be six months you can learn the coding in one month or people take up to their end of the life they can't able to learn so it's up to you how you tackle that but that's to, what to i want to add to what uh, you know askari said uh, uh, i have seen a lot of non tech people even bcom ba people coming in uh, you know enrolling for a full stack de development course data science course and because you know we provide this coding uh, support uh, in the start so so they don't have to worry about whether they come from a coding background or not so i think i have seen a lot of non tech people coming into very solid technical sides like full stack development and data science and uh, and and i've seen them doing wonderfully so as i said i you know if you have a intent to learn and if you get right resources i think one month or like sometimes 15 days also is i think good more than enough is what i could say and but otherwise if you don't have the intent to learn probably then as askari said you know it's uh, a lifetime is also not enough we can take next question amrita yeah sure actually we we do have a next question for uh, mr akash um a student wants to know uh, whether you you went through the same trouble uh, because like you know you're from the tech background but uh, although i think uh, what uh, he meant is that like you know being from college i'm sure uh, usually they don't cover everything every tidbit bit of uh, you know coding that you require uh, and uh, did you face the same trouble and how did upgrade help you out yeah so for me uh, the point being was that i needed to go into web development the portion of uh, point being uh, we were taught java and all kind of programming language were taught in my college but for me i was more into javascript and all those so at first i thought uh, by learning myself i can do that but uh, i needed some kind of mentorship a mentor a mentor to help me uh, in achieving those goals so uh, that's why this upgrade thing uh, literally helped me got there get there sorry so what uh, manish uh, the way wants to know is like how important is data structure like people say data structure is the most important part for full stack development is uh, uh, if you can hear me hello uh, so uh, data structure uh, data structure is important it's it's basically for your logic building if you think uh, data structure will help you in like if you go in uh, building a web application right now you won't require that much of data structure you might require some basic knowledge how to achieve uh, some kind of goals but you don't require a complex tree binary tree all those uh, type of stuff in building a uh, in a building a website or doing a development in a full stack so uh, data structure is important but not as important as in uh, the Well, not as important for the full stack uh, portion. Mm, yeah. Thank you so much, Akasha. I suppose, like, definitely, it did clear out the students, uh, you know, question. Now, uh, what about uh, another student wants to know from uh, Askari Syed is, uh, uh, like, how many projects did you have, uh, uh, you know, in the program of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and uh, you know, how were they helpful actually, uh, you know, with your placement? Uh. thanks so it's very good question by the way Pro projects and all they play vital role while when you are programming but it all comes how you understand the problem as i mentioned before also it is 20% of coding and 80% of understanding the business problem so suppose i am building on the linear regression model so i know how it back end work how it front end uh, how it is going to work if i provide certain parameters so it's you who need to understand okay i need to solve this x problem but i have this this solution how could i find a better solution out of that so project is definitely important part of your resume but i suppose there should be a enough learning you should understand what you are trying to achieve rather than focusing and uh, uh, focusing on what you can't achieve and what you don't need to do so tell me that was really helpful askari in fact uh, you know i i would uh, like to ask the same question to uh, akash also just in case like you know if anybody wants to know more about the full stack development how were the projects akash and how did it help you out uh, you know uh, with upgrade like how did it help you out uh, when it comes to the placement part so uh, my way of learning is by doing so if you think like if you will watch a video if you will solve some kind of questions and then you will get the logic it is okay you might get the logic it might work differently for you but most of the time if you build something um, what you have learned about 
you the chances of getting that logic uh, into your head is uh, more efficient so uh, in upgrade uh, by i think uh, when we finish a module let's say we finished uh, the java script server side language module so we had an a uh, project uh, based on those um, what we have learned so it really makes you uh, more connected towards what you are learning so yeah projects are important you need them uh, like for everything you try try to build something uh, try to build a calendar try to build a to do list or uh, do something but uh, you need a pro you need projects and upgrade uh, will help you uh, while you do those uh, courses <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Akash. In fact, like our next question is uh, for Mr. Abhijit because I think given your uh, extensive uh, past experience, uh, you know this question will be definitely apt for you. Uh, our student wants to know, like you know, what do you think companies are looking for uh, these days in pressure? Very good question. Uh, you know, and I think I am a pretty biased person to answer this question because I'm biased towards pressures. If I hire hundred people uh, at any uh, role or at any position, I would probably prefer seventy-five people out of it uh, uh, being fresher, right? I I don't like hiring experienced people and uh, people and you know the reason being the the thing that I mentioned in the start itself, right? I want people who come up with fresh ideas. First reason, second one, I don't want people who have to do a lot of unlearning and relearning because whenever a person leaves one company and joins another another company. uh you know he, that person has to like unlearn a lot of stuff which he or she had uh, learned in his previous company and he has he or she has to learn a lot which uh, probably has to be implemented here in this uh, new organization so that's the second reason why i want to like i why i prefer to hire freshers third one is because you know uh, freshers have a very strong willingness to learn and very strong willingness willingness to you know do something you know going that extra mile you know people who are like probably you know 5 6 7 years of experience or 2 3 years experience also like they have sort of accepted their career journey but freshers when they start their career the ultimate goal that every fresher has that i want to become the next ceo of this organization and that is what keeps them motivated i think uh, you know and it's fun to work with freshers fun to work with youngsters uh, but above all these things what i look for when it comes to freshers is you know a little bit of logic and common sense um, you know technical skills can be achieved by you know for example we provide courses right you can achieve the technical skills for sure like once you enroll into our course technical skills is not a your problem but something like a common sense something like a logical reasoning rational thinking is is something that you have to develop on your own in fact you know we have been doing some sessions for our students uh, to develop these skills and these techniques soft skill or other uh, and these are the skills which are definitely looked out for because when i hire freshers on or when other people also hire freshers trust me they are also ultimately looking for probably you know somebody who can become ceo 10 years from now uh, of their company so the person has to be very logical very rational and and something someone who has a common sense so very basic requirements is what we have when it comes to freshers so that's about very it. true very true thank you so much mr abhijit in fact like you know with this with a statement of yours about uh, you know the placements that upgrad campus has there's also a question for our alumni uh, how were the placements uh, at upgrad campus and how many interviews uh, did they get how was the student support team uh, during the placements um, over to you mr daskari uh, thanks amrita so the student placement team was very coordinated uh, there there every day there is a new opportunity coming into the upgrad group so i was fortunate enough to get through blenheim shalcott just because of upgrad campus so within 24 no within 48 hours i got to, i finalized my offer letter release everything happened just because of upgrad so i'm always thankful to them but yeah the course and the student mentor support everything was excellent i was provided a round of support post pre pre interview session post interview catch ups and everything explaining me what to do what to not to do see they are going to guide you what to do or what not to do but it up to you how you going to take it forward and and how would you present yourself in the front of interviewer so they going to take you to the part till interviewer it's up to you how you present yourself then so that's what i like to answer the question like that way definitely thank you so much in fact like akash would you like to you know uh, like uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the placement and uh, the support that you got from upgrad campus 
Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, so for me, uh, I had a mentor. Uh, his name is Vikrant. So we were assigned a particular uh, mentee, mentors for uh, this uh, uh, placement session. So uh, Vikrant was very helpful. He helped us in every stage of uh, placement from getting the job position uh, to the job description. He will call us and he will explain us how, what the job role is and how, what kind of uh, technologies they are asking for. And uh, that was helpful. He also uh, took some mock interviews. He uh, polished us uh, based on our skills. He polished us uh, to go to the job. And um, it was very easy. If you if you feel like if you had uh, enough uh, talent in yourself, if you feel like you can do this, then the portion upgrade will means to say upgrade campus will uh, push you to the limits where you can get those jobs. So yeah, for me it was uh, like a really good experience with upgrade. That's that's really great to hear. That thank you so much, Akash. In fact, like there's another question. I think you know this this uh, only you can answer uh, which coding language is currently uh, uh, com okay which coding languages uh, currently companies are looking for uh, if the person studied java in class 10 so will he be able to learn python or should he continue with java only for full stack development uh, so uh, for full stack, there are um, different kind of stacks. Like it depends on what kind of stack you are going into. There is a Java a full stack on Java also. And there is, you have to learn Spring Boot and all those uh, advanced Java for that. And uh, if you think, uh, uh, if you think you can uh, do that, and if you have a prior knowledge of Java, you can definitely go for a uh, full stack in Java, and and you can try a new technology. But I think as you, as uh, he mentioned that uh, he had some prior knowledge of Java. So it is, it will be easier for uh, him, he, he, his uh, tool on that. Okay. In fact, like, you know, there's, there's another question for Askari, wherein uh, a student wants to know, is there any opportunity in abroad in the field of data science in future? You know, if you're working in this field, what do you think? I'm sure you must have your own dreams. So, do you do, would you like to have the student? Uh, sure, Abrita. So, apologies, I didn't hear that topic. Uh, uh, the so. student, the student wants to know if mm -hmm. he or she uh, will work in the field of uh, data science and analytics. Can he ever expect to, you know, uh, go to abroad? Why not? Definitely, I am getting chance in my company. So, there is there is another less opportunity. See, it's all about opportunity. And uh, as I said, if you have a skill, then you don't need to worry. You can travel anywhere. So, but it's up to you how much you have skills, how your soft skills are, like Abhijit had mentioned, the point of soft skill. How important it is in the corporate culture, how you present yourself, how you dress up and all that thing. It all matters nowadays. So, even we are doing work from home and sitting. Uh, I work from home uh, 10 to 7 in the morning. 10 to 7 shift I do, but still the soft skill matters a lot. And whenever you are with your seniors, with your juniors, how you treat your colleagues. So this all things add as a plus point. But definitely it's going to be a good chance if you want to go to abroad also. Thank you so much uh, for answering that. In fact, like we have our next question uh, for Mr. Abhijit, where a student wants to know, is that uh, a, a student with non-tech background who got placed? Uh, because like, I'm sure like, you know, uh, with the experience in this company, I'm sure you would be able to help the student out. Is there? hundred percent. Like, I think just last week I met one of our students from Pune. Uh, she was entirely from non-tech background. I think she was MCOM or BCOM, I guess. And, and I don't remember her name, some Nisha, right? Uh, Nisha More or someone. I, I don't remember the exact name, but she like, she has given us the testimonial and she was so happy while, you know, shooting the testimonial or giving us the testimonial. Uh, that, you know, she, although she came from non-technical background, she got placed in one of the finest companies that are based out of Pune. So I've seen not just that, uh, you know, I can, I can probably give you so many examples. In fact, the mail that you received, you guys received for attending this uh, uh, alumni session, you must have seen some testimonials there, some people who have gotten the job through us. Most of them are non-tech uh, background people. So yes, I have seen, you know, a lot of people getting, uh, you know, tech jobs, even after coming from non-tech background. 
Thank you so much, Avijit. Like, in fact, like uh, this this session is becoming a, a little bit too serious. I I would uh you know like to introduce something wherein like I think uh, a student might have a little bit of fun also with a little bit of stories. Um, so uh let's start with an experience with your first interview or an interview where you have had a little bit of fun. Uh, Mr. Abhijit, can you please uh, you know tell us a little bit of your experience about uh, one of the best interviews you have had? Uh, maybe. the interviews that you have given by yourself or maybe you have taken for someone okay uh, that's that's entirely a, a shocker question to me because i was not prepared for this question somehow uh, but uh, you know let me think uh, what was the best interview that i you know probably you know had to face like i was being interviewed uh, i think it was one of my mba colleges interviews you know when i decided like i got good score in cat and because of which i got a lot of invites from different different colleges uh, for the mba admission and uh, i remember it was one of the uh, best colleges in india uh, from bombay the college was in bombay and the interviewer asked me that you have written reading as your hobby in your uh, resume uh, so what was the what is your favorite book and you know imagine this like uh, an engineer who is like probably 21 22 years old uh being interviewed for cat uh, like for mba uh, admissions and i told them that harry potter is my favorite book uh and i still stand by that answer but that person got angry that you are a 22 year old boy and you are telling me harry potter is your favorite book what happened to tolstoy what happened to stephen king and all these things so and and he was really angry that he thought like you are telling me a children's books name when i ask you about favorite book and you write reading as your hobby to to this day i think i am surprised by his reaction to my answer because i still tell people that harry potter is still my favorite book uh, even after reading uh, you know tolstoy even after reading stephen king even after reading uh, dan brown uh, but i don't know some people understand some people don't probably some people who have read harry potter or are fans of harry potter probably understand others don't so i think that counts as one of my funniest experiences although like i didn't get into that college for sure after that interview but uh, i i think that was funny now that in retrospect it was funny and if you ask me the interviews that i have taken and like you know the student has answered very funny um i can't really think of anything but uh, you know i really find it funny when people uh, you know tell me uh, the answer to this question tell me about yourself people start telling their name and i really hate it every time people start you know telling me their name uh, i find it funny when it comes to you know i know your name why are you telling me your name and that's a very basic thing very normal thing uh, but that's what i find funny so i think this this counts as funny for me i don't know about you guys it is it is in fact like uh, i think it's a suggestion by mr abhijit to please go ahead and read harry potter <laughs> <laughs> uh why don't we move to our uh, you know uh, alumni is where in uh, let's ask them uh, akash how was your interview what all questions did you face i'm sure they all want to know yeah so i'm the least experienced uh, uh, member in this panel so i would uh, like i had faced only two to three uh, interviews right now but i at the end i got the job so i didn't apply in no other companies and so so for me the lentra was very interesting the the current job i have uh, basically uh, we have this uh, we have two rounds of technical rounds l1 and l2 so in l1 uh, when the my, my panelist asked me the question uh, he was asking something about uh, uh, related to javascript and uh, i got confused Uh, so i was telling him something else what he wanted to hear so um, he then uh, uh, grinded me on that question uh, till the last of uh, last uh, uh, till the last until the uh, interview last uh, lasted then uh, he told me uh, when i asked him what uh, would you like to what you will suggest me to improve then he explained me you need to work on a few things here and there and yeah that was the i would say the best part of that interview <laughs> that was actually great to hear in fact uh, why don't you tell a little bit uh, more mr said like how was your interview experience oh thanks amrita so my interview was great uh, i was technically having a two rounds round one with uh, one of the seniors round two with the most senior so round was was uh, half full of a technical technical questions and half full of uh, questions about my degrees and how like what i work and uh, 
how do i think i could contribute to the company so fascinating my round two was very funny it should be supposed to be a very technical and tough round as i was learning here and there but it was very easy one to one round there wasn't any single technical question it was all about a 45 minutes of a call between who is my product manager now to whom i'm reporting now so very fun conversation so he asked me like uh, as as i have known you ditch much from now so you're more into the product development why not into the service management so i tackled that question very easily i said the product product manage product development comes with own challenges rather than service providing a service so in service you have several tickets okay you need to do this 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 and you can go home but when you are building some product you require a ground ground knowledge you need to talk with a person you need to talk with a feature who person who have previously worked like suppose if i am building any seo based automate product so i need to talk to the digital marketing person get their experience and different people then go back to the drawing board draw again if i do mistake i fall i need to get back again so that was all about my interview so yeah it was just a funny conversation of 45 minutes where he tried to understand what's my vision of product building and all thank you so much askari uh, we actually have a question uh, for akash um, is there any other uh, job role better than software engineer in the field of full stack development yes yeah, ma'am uh- it uh, totally depends on your interest if uh, if you what you likes uh, then uh, there will, there are many fields like uh, you have data science you have been a business analyst and all those uh, tech roles um, uh, yeah so you have multiple uh, roles available uh, all are um, all are equally better full stack is better and uh, if you go for data science ai ml all those things are uh, at uh, same level I, for me i think so it's totally depend on you what you what you are trying to get out of uh, mr vijit would you like to actually help the student out in fact like uh, there's a follow up question wherein uh, the student wants to know uh, do product based companies hire full stack developer see of course see we we need to understand what a full stack development uh, developer does right and and for that matter i'm going to take an example of amazon for example you know amazon has one uh, you know user interface where you are buying the product where you are adding the products to your cart where you are paying for the product product where you are editing your profile you are adding your gmail mail id you are adding your phone number and all these things this is like front end and then there is business side of it like the back end where you take you know you make sure that the user interface or user whatever user is doing on your platform goes uh, seamlessly right so any company who has some or the other user touch point definitely has a has a scope for hiring full stack developer so yes product development companies definitely hire uh, full stack developers i think uh, one more question was there yeah. i think amrita that i we missed uh, you know mahesh is asking a question that i am confused between data science and data analytics which one okay. should i opt for uh mai let me answer this question when we started last year uh, last to last year these two programs uh you know one was data analytics and one was data science and we really figured out that okay these two are definitely a confusing choice you know whether to go for data science or data analytics and that's why what we have done now is we have combined these two programs we have one single program which is data science and ad- analytics we teach you analytics at the same time data science as well all right so i think this program will be the right uh, fit for you if you are confused between data science and data analytics you can you know decide your career path after the course you know after data science you can after studying data analytics or this course you can definitely get into analytics path or you can take the data science route and go for artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning and that so on so forth that path so you can always opt for this course which is called data science and analytics so basically like he also wants to know uh, wh- who is a product manager i mean does he study uh, software engineering or uh, product engineering Would there are like two there, there are two types of product managers one are technical product managers who you know uh, uh, sort products technically for example if i am using a customer relationship management software let's say crm software then uh, there is a person who entirely looks after the coding behind the uh, screen right like what is happening on the screen how that crm should work uh, what are the automations required in that particular crm so that product manager is entirely from technical uh, background so that person has to understand the business point of view business side of it uh to to make sure that he's he's putting in the right automations he is putting in the right uh, programming into that software at the same time there are non tech program managers uh, product managers also who have to convey what is the actual business requirement to the technical team 
you know for example i'll take the same example of crm software customer relationship management software here the non tech product manager has to understand what exactly is the business trying to do or what are the business's requirements how are they going to look at the customers from this software point of view how are they going to you know tackle the touch points when it comes to you know talking to customer or reaching out to customer and he or she gives that requirement to the tech team so that they can process it technically you know they can build automations accordingly they can uh, program the software accordingly so you know program managers can be both the types you know i have right now both the types of pro uh, product managers one is definitely a 100% tech guy uh, a very hardcore techie and other person who is working as a product manager for me is entirely from non tech background uh, and but but he comes from a sort of business understanding background so that's i think explains the question this is the answer thank you so much mr abhijit i mean this definitely must have cleared his doubt in fact like we have another question which is for aksari wherein um, you know he wants to a student wants to know uh, what is the scope of a data analyst in the field i mean he wants to know what is the job role of a data analyst or a data scientist in a company uh thanks thanks for the question the question is good so many people as abhijit mentioned many people get confused between data science and data analyst so analyst is someone who actually uh, analyze the data get the insights from the data and pass it to the data scientist further to building a model so this both are the important pillars of any data science team a data scientist build a model interact with other softwares but the data analyst is a core programming where it core programming comes up like you have to uh, analyze the data get the data extract the data transform the data load it properly analyze it pass it through the business requirement whether it is solving the questions or not so yeah business they both have their own plus points so i'm not going into that much but yeah if you have a passion to build any ai ml model like i have so you should pursue data scientist and if you want to play with the data then definitely data analyst is for you so you need to choose by your side thank you so much askari um actually uh, in fact you know what guys uh, i'm going to share a form in the chat uh, wherein uh, if you have any questions or doubts uh, please just fill up the form and uh, uh, like you know our our consultants will reach out to you and they will clarify all your doubts all your queries uh, on the call uh, before you go ahead with the program or whatever uh, issues you have related to this other than that uh, we will definitely uh, you know try to clear everything out Uh, you know in this uh, session because this is a short session um, i'm i'm not sure whether you know we'll be able to cover everything in next 15 minutes uh, but uh, we do have a question actually for uh, mr ramjeet uh, what is better a service based company or a product based company i think uh, this is a major doubt that students do have they don't know um, uh, the difference between uh, both of them uh, would you like to help them out definitely you know like i find this question really funny what's better service based company or product based company i think the best job that you can find is something that you are good at uh, i can't even put it better you know like if you are good like if you think that you are the right fit for service based industry then that will be the best industry for you if you think you are the best fit for product based industry you that will be the best fit for you i have seen so i'll tell you a little bit about my background see i am a mechanical engineer then i did marketing mba operations mba as well then i joined a finance company then i joined a paints company and now i'm working in education uh you know and and you know i i may not like i don't want to call myself a very successful guy but i'll tell you one thing i'm i have been happy with every job that i took uh, be it finance job be it the uh, you know uh, something like a uh, fast moving consumer goods paints in the paint industry and now i'm working in education you know every time i have taken up a job i have figured out the job profile whether it's matching to my skill set or not and as long as it's matching you know the job is definitely going to be happy uh, you are going to be definitely happy in that job but that's a global gyan wala answer i guess but let me answer very specifically to your question what is better service based companies or product based companies i have worked in product based companies as well as service based companies uh, they both have their pros and cons when it comes to service based companies you know in marketing we say there are four p's for product based companies and there are seven p's when it comes to service based companies in uh, in product based there are only four p's product price place and promotion you have to focus on these four things and your product is you know well ready to sell but when it comes to service industry there are three more p's you know product price place promotion these are basic p's but there are three more that is people physical evidence and processes 
so when it comes to service industry the biggest challenge is to you know get right people build processes and as you are into something intangible you have to you know give a very very clear physical evidence of success of your uh, product or you know the qualities of your product so uh, when i look from my personal point of view i think service industry service based industry uh, industries are more challenging as compared to product based because product proves itself in product based in service service industry you know you have to like give a lot of evidences to make sure that the customer knows that your product is working so i think it's more challenging so it's your call entirely but as i said earlier you know you need to understand what is your skill set and match it to the job profile and that's the best fit for you thank you so much mr abhijit in fact uh, i think like there's a follow up question on that <laughs> and i'm sure uh, this is something that uh, that is uh, you know confusing a lot of students what is a project manager because there, there is a lot of product in that sentence the student also wants to know what is a project manager project manager like i think it's a self explanatory you know the name project like uh, every company for example for upgrad our parent company upgrad campus was a, one of the projects that we started right like upgrad is into working professionals they wanted to know or they wanted to start something for college students and freshers so they started a project called upgrad campus now when we are starting a project then there are a lot of things you know like how to start a project uh what are the resources that are required what is the market research that we have to do once we do all the market research once we, once we start building the project or building the particular you know vertical like for example upgrad campus then what are the things how many people do we need to hire what are the resource, resource includes everything right like people uh what are the uh, other infrastructure resources that you require so a project manager is someone you know who starts from the scratch when there is non existent thing and builds up an entire vertical entire product line entire you know business line uh, so project can be anything so a project manager does something like this kind of thing so now i have seldom seen uh, one person doing start from the end but project managers take parts of this process you know like uh, somebody takes the initial process like you know doing market analysis market research understanding the resource requirement building up that requirement and passing out to the next team next team takes that requirement builds up the project according to that then pass it on to the next team for operations now operationally also there are different project managers so this is something what a project manager uh, does thanks a lot mr abhijit and in fact guys like uh, there's a form shared in the chat right now uh, please do fill it up uh, you will get personalized calls to help you with all your queries again i would like to you know repeat this we have our next question for one our second. alumni one yeah. second before before we go to the next question like amrita has been asking you to fill up that uh, questionnaire uh, or form you know when we started this vertical upgrade campus we understood that we are tr trying to you know enroll students we are trying to do something for students and freshers who are either entirely confused up confused about you know how to start their career or probably you know are overly excited uh, to start their career in both the cases you know when you are over excited or over scared or over cautious about something your decision making you know falters a little bit uh, your decision making is little difficult that's why we decided to hire counselors who uh, who uh, amrita is talking about these counselors will try to understand your background your profile what are your skill sets and probably you know they will suggest you what is the right set of skills that you need to get uh, you know uh, acquainted to so that's why you know like talk to these people these people are experts into understanding the career requirements understanding the profiles of people like you and they will suggest you the right thing to do in the future all right so that's why you should talk to them uh, and then probably you can decide what to do what is your next step in your career so please do fill this form uh, so that you know like uh, my team can reach out to you can understand you better and can suggest you help you uh, do better in your career yes amrita what was the next question for the alumni thank you mr abhijit uh, yes so basically our student wants to know uh, how are the weekend sessions and where they helpful uh, you know explaining about the uh, projects that you guys are talking about so uh, mr akash would you like to uh, you know uh, tell about that yeah yeah uh, so those uh, weekend session were very helpful uh, very helpful um, we had a live session where we had the doubt we can go ask them the doubt and they will solve the those doubts and if we have something uh, really complex they will um, if they aren't able to solve that in a, that particular time they will reach out to you in uh, acha ha, yeah though and he will or he or she will reach out to you in a, in some time and he will solve the doubt so it was very helpful for me uh, in particular because i have uh, a huge amount of doubts uh, and i usually go to them they they help me out yeah that was the 
most. Thank you. Thank you so much, Akash. Uh, so we actually have a learner uh, who wants to know, um, uh, I think, you know, uh, Askari would be able to help uh, the student out. Uh, did you ever get stuck in the program? And if you did, uh, how, what sort of help did you get during the session? Okay, so if, if, as a programming term, so you can get stuck in every time. So as a from, from support from a grad, so yeah, it was fortunate enough to put the session into the forum and get the answers from the other, other team members also. But uh, even mentors have, have also helped me a lot to clear my doubts in wherever I got stuck. And uh, mentor can clear your doubts still one side, but at the end, it's effort from our side that we need to do put. So yeah, personally, when I get stuck, stuck somewhere, I usually do Google, try to find the solution. If I won't found, then I get to the mentor because it's up to you. They are not here to help us every time. So you need to start finding your doubts and clearing your doubt by yourself. If not, then you can ask your mentors. Definitely, they are here to solve your doubts, but they also expect us to, you should solve your first. If not, then come to us. So that's how I think. I don't know about, I don't know about any others, but that's how I think. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, there's there's actually another question uh, wherein a person wants to know uh, you know if if you can if you are a full stack developer whether you can apply for back end jobs I think uh, I would like what to answer that <laughs> so full stack consists of both front end and back end so yes you can apply for it definitely uh, I would uh, also suggest you to talk to our uh, you know subject matter expert again uh, by filling up the form. And the person will guide you from the, because the person will be from the same arena of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of expertise in the development area. And the person will be able to help you out with all these uh, specific content related doubts. Uh, so, but uh, I, I do have a very interesting question and somehow I feel like Mr. Abhijit will be help, uh, will be able to help the student out. Uh, Manish Dubey wants to know, he has one year of experience in sales. So um, I believe he he comes under pressure. Will my sales experience work in technical part or should I not include that? Okay, very good question. Uh, like, you know, Manish has asked this question, right? Manish, think of yourself as the interviewer and would, would you consider your sales experience for a tech job? Answer this question to yourself. I personally would not. But at the same time, uh, I don't think this one year experience into sale is entirely going to be discarded because, you know, uh, you, I don't know what you were selling in sales job, but whatever you were selling, you know about that product, you know about how corporates work. So I will definitely consider that experience from that point of view that how much you know about the product, how much you know about organizational behavior, how much you know about organizational culture. But that's about it. I'll not consider that from the tech point of view, but definitely from other points of uh, point of views, uh, definitely I'll consider that. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mr. Abhijit, to help the student out. In fact, like we have another question, uh, which will which is apt for uh, Akash. Uh, did you have any uh, technical uh, related? Uh, just a second. Yeah, uh, technical related. Uh, queries during the session and like you know how did you resolve it uh, uh you know because this is a coding uh part and your sessions were online uh yeah i had a lot of technical related queries so usually uh, again the mentors from upgrade side um whenever i feel like i cannot do that thing and i have tried enough uh, and i'm not getting the result what i wanted so I'll ask, um, I'll pin them on WhatsApp, and if uh, if they if they don't uh, solve that at that particular time in the next session, whenever it will be the next session, they will uh, come to uh, particularly pick my questions uh, again, and they will uh, help me out on that particular day. So it was uh, it was easy. It was easy. If uh, try first, and then uh, go to uh, get a help from um, uh, your mentors. The best part is the mentors. You will get uh, someone uh, really amazing, amazing from upgrade that will like literally uh, help you throughout the course. Thank you so much, Akash. Uh, in fact, like this, the next one is for Askri, uh, wherein according to you, what is the scope of machine learning? Okay. So okay, that's a good question, by the way. Machine learning is a very dynamic field. So it could help. So uh, if you're talking about my perspective, so machine learning and NLP and all that are 
playing a huge role nowadays machine learning help us to identify uh, whether there is going some fraud has been done or not if you are talking towards the nlp part so it will help us to analyze the huge 10 page summary into a uh, 10 page document into one summary one single page if you talking about a deep learning part so it is helping us to recognize a facial facial recognition system and all so they both have their own advantages machine learning is like more into the mathematics and more coding you need to be very patient because sometimes model really doesn't give you the good score so you need to be patient trying and error methods and everything comes into that so yeah machine learning have a very good scope so anyone can pursue that also thank you so much akri in fact like uh, our uh, next question uh, there's a statement i'm not sure this is a question uh, neha neha wants to say i am working in sales and i have zero knowledge of tech but still i want to learn more about it and uh, is this the good option to start uh, from data analytics mr abhijit would you like to help us with it yes neha i don't know what's your background per se i think one of the questions that you mentioned earlier you are coming from non tech background but somebody from sales and going into data analytics probably one of the best fits that are there you know i i i have been working in sales for last almost 10 years now and i can tell you that data analytics is something that is very close to uh, what i do you know i crunch a lot of data even though i'm not a data analyst but like with the with my experience you know i crunch a lot of data but i think that's very good decision if you are if you are if you are not going to say stay in sales role uh, business, business analytics or data analyst, analytics could be like you know the best options that you can go for so yes thanks a lot in fact like i think this this one would also be directed to mr abhijit as we are doing certification and internship course do we get assured internship with paid like i think the student wants to know is the internship plus program is paid or not uh, like if, will he be getting paid internship got it got it so then and i'll tell you one thing you know like we have followed something very uh, Uh, rigorously at upgrad campus that we will make sure that you will get all the technical skills that are required for a particular job we will make sure that we train you on soft skills that are required to you know face the interviews we'll make sure you go through mock interviews we'll make sure that you will practice enough gd rounds uh so that you know we can take you to the interview room so i can guarantee you i can assure you that i'll make sure that you get enough interviews to you know get placed as an intern or as a full time employee also but inside the interview room it's all you so we don't provide job guarantee because inside the interview room it's all you and your performance and your answers and your skills but what i can tell you that will train you enough to face the interviews can confidently at the same time will give you enough opportunities of you know facing the interviews uh to uh you know crack those interviews so no job guarantee but we'll assure you that we'll get you'll get enough interviews thanks a lot mr abhijit uh so before like we close this session uh, i would uh, like i have a question uh, which i think like definitely a lot of students will find helpful uh we will go one by one uh mr uh, askri like i i generally wanted to know what is the best part uh, you felt about upgrad campus course Okay, so the best part is like getting twenty-four by seven constant support from the team members and from the upgrad team, obviously. So the way they design the course from basic Python. So like as so many questions I've seen, people are telling that I'm coming from non-tech background and all that background. So even if you're coming from a non-tech background, upgrad make sure that you have enough Python exposure before moving to the data analytics and further part. they are build, they are preparing students step by step not like hey, okay as maine python sikha the so tomorrow i will teach you direct data science not that way so they go very in a particular manner so that's a very good thing about the upgrad second thing is like if you have a will so you can do it any time so yeah that's all uh so actually uh, over to you mr akash uh, i genuinely would want to know that ha uh, so yeah i would uh, totally agree to ashpuri um the way upgrade design design their course is really helpful uh, as you know that um, uh, when i started um, full stack development i thought i will be directly learning javascript and we will be doing a uh, straight uh, development but um, uh, to my surprise first they taught me java then data structure algorithm then object oriented programming and then we went to uh, and this uh, uh, development part so i think the, the way upgrade design their um, uh, 
a great campus design their courses are really helpful to you and definitely the mentors you, know, you have you will be assigned uh, you will be having a mentor to yourself which he will definitely uh, answer your questions or your queries and that will make you more confident towards uh, what is going on and at the end of the day it will be your uh, your way of doing things like if you want to do that thing you will definitely achieve that goal yeah thanks a lot akash in fact thanks to both of you for you know taking out time from your precious day i'm sure you guys are busy this is a week day and uh, i'm sure our students are much more uh, you know uh, grateful for your help and uh, i i generally wanted to uh, you know thanks uh, thanks to all our uh, you know participants attendees who are here and i i believe all your doubts are clarified if not i i would uh, you know request you to fill out this form and uh, get all your doubts and queries clarified because of course like you know uh, no one can move forward if you have any any sort of queries in your mind we do want you uh, to you know Uh, come to us with a clear mind, and I'm sure our learning consultants will be able to help you out. Before we close the session, um, uh, Mr. Abhijit, would you like to say some last words to our yes, students? Yes, definitely. So, first thing that I want to like apologize: a lot of questions seems to be uh, unanswered. But guys, you know we had limited time, so uh, you know like Gautam has been asking a lot of questions, but we haven't been uh, able to answer. So, Jeet has asked a question. you know there was a question about you know whether an mba guy should go for digital marketing course and all these questions guys i'm really sorry that we could not answer all your questions but please do fill this form and uh, my consultants my counselors will be more than happy to answer your questions okay having said that amrita you were talking about you know like what is the best part about upgrad campus and i'll tell you one thing you know i've been working in education for last 5 5 and a half years almost 6 years now and you know a lot of people come and tell me that okay whatever you are teaching i can learn from youtube and i ask them to go and by all means go and learn from youtube is what i tell them uh, i'll tell you one difference between uh, what youtube learning or any other learning type of learning and upgrad campus and and this is intentionally built that way uh, you know if you go for youtube if you go for entirely self paced program there are a lot of organizations who provide recorded videos and ask you to go through them claiming that you can learn from that uh, i'll tell you their completion rate is hardly 10% all right but upgrad campuses completion rate is around 90% you know uh, what what i mean is if 100 people are enrolling in one batch 90 people complete the course over the next 6 6 months period the reason why 90% of the people complete our uh, our course is because we provide hand holding throughout the course starting from the day one to the day last you know our mentors and our teaching assistants are there uh you know when i say 24 by 7 not like 24 by 7 online but you can reach out to them whenever you are facing any problem like as akash and uh, skari explained you can reach out to them they will help you any time but we will we'll make sure that you complete the course and i think you know that makes us stand out stand apart from the uh, other courses that are there uh, we make sure that people complete the course people get upskilled and people get what they were actually looking for uh, from a career point of view from a skilling point of view from a learning point of view so i think that's the best part for for me and uh, and i have uh, i have been making it like real sure that these things are in in the place intact when it comes to delivering the course so i'm hoping to see a lot of you guys uh, on the board with us and uh, you know we'll be more than happy to deliver a good course to you and uh, and i think it will be a crucial thing for us to be the starting point for your careers so all the best from my side uh, thank you amrita for letting me be here and thanks askari and akash i'm really happy that you you liked our course you were benefited by the course so that's it from me amrita thank you so much abhijit i'm sure your guidance your experience did help a lot of students out with all their questions and queries i just like you know would like to add that our entire program is uh, you know structured in such a way to support you to help you uh, may that be in admissions learning clearing your doubts or even giving you practical knowledge or even managing your time as you go to college and in fact with your placements of course with your placements uh, but from you we definitely need one thing and that is commitment as long as you are committed to the program there is no way you cannot achieve your dream of having a high paying career in this field uh, trust me the demand is now and you have the time at hand and we have the right resources for you so i would request you not to slow down invest in yourself and make a killer career right now thank you so much everyone for joining we'll end the session right now have a great evening ahead thank you so much alumni again Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Abhijit. Thanks, thanks, Amrita. Thank, thanks, thank Abhijit. Thank you. Thank you.